Today, I'm gonna to talk about buying your next lens for your camera. Now, when it comes to buying new lenses, I get asked this all the time, and I see posts all over the internet asking what lens to buy. This is normally followed by, I plan to do landscapes, portraits, real estate, sports, lifestyle, astrophotography, wildlife, cityscapes, and the list goes on. Now, if you're asking this question, and if you've posted something similar to this, this tells me either that you're not yet sure which direction to take your photography in, or you're a beginner and don't know what lens does what. So hopefully, if you are that person, I can help you answer this question today. And if you're not, but still in the market for a new lens, maybe this will help as well. The one thing with camera gear and lens setups is that every photographer that you see with a whole host of lenses, for the most part, has built that collection up over time. I started with a kit lens, and then I got a 50 millimeter 1.8, and then next I got a slightly longer lens to get more reach, and then I bought a super wide angle lens. And this was over a quite a few years. Nowadays, I mostly shoot with prime lenses, but I always have a few different lenses on my shopping list. And sometimes my lens lineup will change over the years as well. The main thing is making sure you get the right one and you don't waste your money on lenses that you don't need and will end up gathering dust in a drawer or just living in your bag without being used at all. So if you are asking yourself this question about what lens you should buy next, you need to ask yourself a few other things first. The main one is what is your budget? This is a big one as lenses can cost anything from $10 right through to $20,000 and probably a little bit higher than that. So you need to be really specific with this costing. If you dream of a 400 millimeter F2.8, but only have $500, you need to manage your expectations. So work out what your budget is first, and then you know how much you can spend. And then you won't kind of waste time looking at things that you can't afford. Well you won't waste too much time looking at things that you can't afford. The quality of photographs that you can potentially get is not really dependent on your camera body. It's more linked to the quality of lenses that you have. So spend as much as you can afford, and also think through these next questions I'm going to ask you. What are you shooting at the moment? This is not what you want to shoot or what's in your bucket list of things to photograph, what are you shooting right now? This is more than likely the thing that you'll be shooting for a while and what you'll be honing your photography skills with. I learned photography back in the 90s after injuring myself riding motocross bikes. I was told I couldn't ride again, but still wanted to be involved in the industry. So I bought myself a camera and carried on going to those motocross events. It was a tough environment to learn in and changing film at dusty motocross tracks was never fun. But it really taught me about working with the kit that I had and more importantly, the subjects I was shooting. So what are you shooting right now? And does your kit cover what you want to get out of your subject? And this leads me into the next question. And this is, what are you missing with your current lens and camera setup? You might feel like it isn't wide enough or the telephoto end doesn't give you quite enough reach to fill the frame with your subject or maybe you can't get that background quite out of focus enough. If you can answer this question, you can pretty much work out what you are missing and what might be the next lens for you. Now, I don't have a huge lens lineup, but it suits me down to the ground for what I'm shooting right now. I photographed some landscapes in the south of Thailand recently. I also went out to shoot some street photography in Bangkok. However, there were a few shots I took where I wanted to get a little bit closer and I don't have a long enough lens to get those shots. So this is an indicator of what I need to invest in next. For big events, I normally rent a 70 to 200 millimeter or longer if needed, but I really do need a telephoto lens to add to the mix. And to be honest, I haven't had one for a while and I could do with one to add to the collection. And also it's probably my gear acquisition syndrome kicking in yet again. So I'm saving up for the 100 to 400 millimeter right now. Now there are two of these lenses that I'm looking at and it's the Sony 100 to 400 millimeter and it's the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter as well. The budgets are quite different and I just need to work out how much I want to spend on this lens and how different they really are. I could also do with a 24 millimeter 1.4, but I don't really need it. So in that case, working out what I want and what I need is what I'm really working on. And this is what you need to work on as well. You might have a list of all the lenses that you really want, 
But then if you go through this list of questions, you can work out what you really need. So really think about what you're photographing right now. If you're not sure and you seem to want to photograph everything and anything, think about the last five times you were out with your camera. Did you need more reach on the telephoto end or did you want to go wider but weren't able to because of the limitations of your lens? If wider and you have a kit lens, go with a 10 to 18 millimeter if you shoot with a crop sensored camera. Or if you're on a full frame, go with a 14 to 24 millimeter. If you need more reach, think about the 70 to 200 millimeter range. This is a really useful range and you can get really close with that telephoto end at 200 millimeters. Now this could be something like the 70 to 180 millimeter from Tamron if you're on a limited budget or the 70 to 200 f4 or even the f2.8 if you've got a much bigger budget. Most brands do make this telephoto range as it is so popular and you'll normally find an f4 version and an f2.8 version. If you already have this and you need even more length, if you're on a budget, there are things like the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter, although that lens is a little bit soft. And if you're a Sony shooter, the Sigma 100 to 400 millimeter. These will give you so much more reach and you'll be able to get so much closer to your subject that you're shooting. Now, if you don't like the lack of bokeh in your kit lens, which is Japanese for that background blurriness, don't write your kit lens off straight away. You can complement it with a prime lens for not much at all if that's what you're after. If you're shooting with a full frame camera, get a basic 50 mm f1.8. The Canon and Nikon ones are really cheap and the Sony one is a little bit more expensive but less than the rest of the Sony range. And don't worry too much about image quality either. When you do kind of get that background out of focus and you're shooting with a really shallow depth of focus, a little bit of softness in your shots sometimes adds a bit of character to your photographs. If you're on a crop sensor, get something like a 35 mm or a 40 mm f2.8 down to f1.8 if you can afford it. Remember, the lower the f number, the better it is for that shallow depth of field look. And again, this comes down to that first question. What is your budget? If it's big, you could go for an f1.4 or even an f1.2 lens. But if not, go for an f1.8 or maybe even an f2.8. Now, if your budget is tiny, there are a lot of vintage lenses out there and a lot that aren't that much money at all. Something like the Canon FT 50mm is a really fun one to shoot with and you can get the f1.8 for around about $50 with an adapter costing around about $6 to $10. This is a manual focus lens, but it will teach you so much about photography. It will actually force you to slow down and think about what you're doing when taking a photograph. I sometimes just go out with a vintage lens on my camera and nothing else just to challenge myself. Now, if you like the kit lens, but it isn't giving you quite enough reach and you like having just one lens on your camera, you have a few options. You can go for something like the 24 to 105 millimeter if your camera is full frame. If you're on a crop sensor, something like the 18 to 105 millimeter from Sony or the 18 to 135 from Canon. And most brands have something similar in this range. What this will do is give you a bit more reach, but the convenience of just one lens. Also, if you're adamant about just one lens, then a super zoom might be the one to go for. All you need to realize with this route is that you will sacrifice a tiny bit of image quality, but it is actually a lot less of a compromise than you might think. Usually it's only a very subtle difference in that image quality. Now, as well as this, the apertures won't be quite as wide, and this is just down to the physical limitations of the lens. I'd love to have a 14 to 600 millimeter f1.4 lens but this would probably be about the size of Saturn V and would be an absolute nightmare fitting it in my hand luggage. You really do need to think about what you want, what you need and what is available for the budget you have. So think about that budget and look for a lens in that range. Then think about what's missing from your current lens lineup and look for one that will fill that gap and then just go out and get a new lens as soon as you can afford it. I mean, what's the worst that can really happen? You might find that you buy something that's not for you and you end up selling it. But on the other hand, you might find that it changes the way that you shoot, developing your photography even further. After saying all of that, there really is no wrong lens. You just want to find the best one for the job that you're doing or for what you want to get out of your hobby and the one that will help you get what you want the most. Now, let me know in the comments below what you think about this approach. I try to do this every time I'm thinking of buying a new lens. I don't always succeed 
and sometimes I just get one that kind of fulfills that gear acquisition syndrome. But when I do ask myself these questions, I do tend to get the bit of kit that I actually need. Now, if you like this video and want to see more, click on this one next. Or if you're a binge watcher like I am, click down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for two videos a week. I'll see you next time.